So Spencer is going to start the game off. He stands over the ball and awaits the referee's whistle. Well, my clock, we're about a minute late. But there you go. All the way back to Hamza Ben Sharif and then out to Brad Nicholson. Uh, no, sorry, that's Scott Garner. It's a good start. Not on by Aaron Martin for Sam Scrivens, who uh, is beaten in the air and Gateshead can hoof the ball away uh, over to the halfway line. Hamza Ben Sharif heads it back in uh, and Gateshead can mount another attack, another long ball over the top, but Ben Sharif's underneath it again. Gateshead now break, trying to break down the right-hand side. Aram Solomon in attention to Dominic Tier on the right-hand side and uh, forces Tier off on the far side. Gateshead playing from right to left as we look at it. And out for a throw for the Lions. It's quite a pacey start, really, isn't it? Yeah, looking all right. And Sam Scrivens trying to peel off into space, trying to get onto these balls, which is exactly what they'll be uh, hoping he'll be able to do uh, during this game. That, that role that Lee Shaw's been playing, all hustle and bustle and, and pace and energy. And Scrivens has got a bit to live up to, to uh, slot in, so that uh, Aaron Martin and the uh, wingers don't notice the absence too much. It's just a moment there where the uh, Gateshead defender headed back to his goalkeeper. Uh, and Aaron Martin was loitering dangerously on the edge of the penalty area, but uh, just ran ahead of him into the keeper's arms. Gateshead now trying to move down the left-hand side. Uh, they've rather outnumbered the Lions down the left-hand side, and a cross there from Nicky Devidic is overhit across the face of the six-yard area and out for a throw-in on the far side. But that's... The Lions had... No, Gateshead rather had two men over on the left-hand side there, Devidic and Coyote. Both loitering, waiting to put a cross in. A dangerous moment there in the early part of this game. We just uh, got a message from Colin, who's not with us today, telling us how dreadful it sounds. So, uh, hope you're all enjoying it so far. We'll try and leave the pauses to a minimum, because there really isn't much background noise to fill the space. <laughs> there are people in front of us as I look down, a good smattering. It's a big, deep stand uh, with really steep steps up the side. So there are some people in here, but they're, they're pretty well spread out because there's a lot of spaces. And uh, you won't be able to hear a huge amount of that through this glass that we're behind. Gates had had a throw on the, uh, on the near side to us, uh, which Sam Scrivens worked quite hard to keep in from going out for another throw and threatened to start another attack. But uh, Gates had dealt with it. Uh, now ball played up to Kane Felix and Felix loses it and the ball played over the top for Greg Ollie to run on to on the left hand side Brad Nicholson uh, sorry Scott Garner comes quickly over to cover it and stops it from going out and the linesman initially looked like he gave a corner and it took a while but the referee has pulled play back as Kane Felix was threatening to escape and Gates had have their first corner of the game Bit of a bit of a delay to the uh, decision making process there, by the looks of it. There, there was a little bit, but uh, it is a corner now, and guys, they all tucking in. Apart from Sam Scrivens, who's just on the D. Every other guy's the player, well inside their own area. Taken into the box, up to the far post, nodded back across and hooked away uh, by a guysly man, and up as far as Aram Solomon. Aram Solomon tries to knock the ball ahead and wins a free kick, and the Lions can clear their lines. Well, Solomon's not going to endear himself to the home fans like that. He's run at the defender and then bounced off of him. And I was a bit surprised, really, to see the referee give that because it was obvious what Solomon was, was asking for there, really. He wasn't trying to get into the space beyond the player, particularly. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how much slack he gets from the referee, how much return he gets for those, for those attempts because it was a little bit soft for me, that one. Ball played up by Dewhurst to the edge of the Gateshead penalty area and the Lions just trying to mount an attack. Kane Felix uh, wins a header, gets a cross in and it's well held in the end by Brad James as Jamie Spencer was coming in. Sorry, Sam Scrivens even was bearing down on him. Uh, bit of luck there as the ball came out of the sky. Uh, Kane Felix went up for the header and took a moment to realise the ball was behind him and in a perfect place for a cross. It was a decent cross. Brad James came out and claimed it well. Maybe we should get Tom to get a bit of atmosphere going behind here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Tom. And 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 also, what would help would be uh, if you can if you can give us some things to fill the silence with by joining us on the Mixlr chat rooms, mixlr.com slash Geisley Radio, or search Geisley on the Mixlr app, as you full well know if you're already listening to us. But you can log in with Facebook or create an account on there, and uh, and you can talk to us to help fill the voids that we're going to have every time the ball goes out of play. <laughs> And to be fair, filling the void when we're talking uh, as well. That, <laughs> filling the void is the entire job <laughs> for, for 90 <laughs> minutes plus half time. <laughs> Guys, with a throw deep inside their own half. Uh, Cantrell there, throwing it long up to the halfway line. It's immediately returned. And there's a bit of a game of head tennis now in the centre of the field. Drops down to Coyote. Uh, Coyote forced out to the right-hand side. Lions just trying to keep their shape here. Coyote down the right. Brad Nicholson's with him. Try and hold him down. Brad Nicholson does well, actually, to hold it up. And as uh, another guy's man tries to break away, concedes the throw on the halfway line for Gateshead. One of the big areas that's going to make uh, all the difference in how this game goes today uh, is how these two formations line up against each other. Guys, they have fewer players in midfield with the 4-4-2 and the extra striker up front in Scrivens. Gateshead playing the 4-2-3-1 that's been very popular over the last 10 years. That means they've got an extra body who can drop in there, the sort of number 10, who can help out in midfield. But it does mean that that striker, uh, Josh Coyote, Looks a little bit isolated so far up against Hamza Ben Sharif and Scott Garner at centre back. Well, first battle of the day uh, just happened there. Hamza Ben Sharif had the ball on the inside his own penalty area. He invited Josh Coyote to try and get it off him, beat him, uh, and then uh, Coyote just caught Ben Sharif. Dewhurst with the free kick up to Aaron Martin, who wins the header but uh, doesn't fall to a yellow shirt and it's hooked away again. This is happening a lot, though. Very scrappy, and the ball is played over, and the linesman has already said, I think it was Scrivens, was offside as the ball was returned. So Gateshead will have a free kick. Aside from the, uh, the, the, the lack of sound, it's a nice spot to be commentating from. You can see over away to our left, lots of autumnal-looking trees and a couple of churches and blocks of houses there. And then over to the right, see more of the industrial stuff around the stadium here and the ground itself obviously is one of the more impressive looking ones that we go to even if it is sort of uh, like a grown up version of the horse fall because we're so far away from the actual grass <laughs> uh, Gates out of the ball down the left hand side the free kick was played up to Cantrell's header nearly went out for a corner but Garner hooked it out for a throw but they have a throw in in a very dangerous position on the edge of the uh, in line with the edge of the penalty area it's uh, nodded across by Coyote but too far and Solomon is on it, plays it back to Brad Nicholson. And Brad Nicholson can slowly bring the ball clear up to Aaron Martin, who nods it on. Sam Scrivens is going to chase this uh, with Scott Barrow, but uh, Barrow gets there first, hooks the ball away. Cantrell tries to let the ball go out for a throw and succeeds. Cantrell with a throw then on the right hand side as Geisley attack referee being very particular about where George should take this throw in 50 piece as he runs and takes it 10 yards further down anyway <laughs> oh he's gone short he's gone short to Jamie Spencer on the halfway line and the Lions will just move from right to left Nicholson has Solomon running in front of him and chooses to play the ball right to the feet of Liam Agnew, which is not particularly helpful. And uh, Gateshead can come clear again. Up to Coyote, who, under the attentions of Scott Garner, wins a free kick. Well, that's one each way. It looks like it's going to be a, a physical battle between Coyote and the two experienced guys the centre-halves. And that time, Garner swung his leg through and got a bit of the tall Gateshead sole target man. Played down the right across the six-yard box. It's a dangerous ball across. And there was nobody in a Gateshead shirt throwing themselves at it. 
just all went past all of them. But that was a dangerous moment there for the Lions. Yeah, it led to the first real good chance of the game. As you say, player just needed to get a foot to the ball and uh, Marcus Dewhurst would have been in some trouble there. So uh, even though they're only playing with the one up front, he looks like he's going to cause some problems one-on-one -on -one with the two central defenders, Coyote. It still feels a bit strange saying that name and it's not it's a not, player not playing for us, yeah. <laughs> Lions now trying to apply some pressure down the right-hand side. Jamie Spencer comes across. Oh, no. Thought he was going to take the throw in there. He's just handing the ball back to the uh, ball boy. Brad Nicholson will trot across for a, probably a trademark long throw. He's got plenty of space to run into. To take a good, good old run up here. And he does into the edge of the six-yard box up to where Scott Garner was, but he's outnumbered there, comes back out to Brad Nicholson Nicholson to Spencer Nicholson and Spencer combine to get the ball into the box again but Gateshead clear Aaron Martin works very hard down the left hand side to win the ball back but then immediately plays it away and Gateshead could break out on the right or on the right hand side here but then Gateshead moves possession and try and play in Sam Scrivens but Gateshead defender gets a foot in the way to stop that, it was a bit frantic this and then another ball over the top into the arms of Marcus Dewhurst yeah, a lot of players try and kill a balls there and uh, sometimes they come off but a lot of the time you end up with a little spell of play like we just saw where both teams are nearly doing something but, but really producing not that much. It was a nice little move uh, to the game to move the ball around in the way that Geisley did and keep, keep, try and keep some pressure on him. Martin did so well to actually win the ball on the left-hand side there but it was just a, such a duff pass uh, when he finally got it. Yeah, absolutely, and I, th I think what I'm saying is you see, you see there's sometimes where players are trying really hard and straining and, and trying to make something happen all of a, in, in a bit of a hurry, really, all of a sudden, and you can end up with it going end-to-end -end like that without any real chances on goal. Long ball over the top for Sam Scrivens, who's onside, got to the edge of the six-yard box, puts it just to the right of the keeper who gets a... who looked to me like he got a leg on that. I would have said that was a corner, but the referee's given a goal kick. But a lovely ball over the top, caught the gate, said defence completely cold. Sam Scrivens was alive to it, got to the edge of the six-yard box, tried to side-foot the ball past the keeper. The keeper, to my mind, got a, got a leg on that. That should have been a corner, but the referee's given a goal kick. Well, if the keeper didn't save that, then Scrivens is going to be a little bit embarrassed because he was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. The ball was coming from behind him and he had to time himself quite carefully. He didn't rush into taking the shot and he was trying to tuck it away uh, under the goalkeeper's right leg and arm. And I thought, as you say, that Brad James did enough to uh, scuff it away from the goal and out for a corner. And certainly the other guys who players around Scrivens thought that as well. Though Scrivens himself wasn't looking particularly animated in asking for the corner kick. Anyway, guys, who got a chance to uh, go again. They've got a free kick uh, just inside the gateshead half that uh, Andre Jones is standing over at the moment. And Brad Nicholson with him. Plenty of yellow shirts lining up on the edge of the gates head box. And it's Brad Nicholson who puts the ball into the box, left footed. Hamza Ben Sharif gets up, and Aaron Martin hits it. Overhead kick into the back of the net, and the Lions lead. No! It's still it's allowed. No. Why? Is he saying offside? I, I think he's saying there's High a foul. Foot. Oh, come on, there was no one near him. Oh, so lovely ball in by Brad Nicholson. Hamza Ben Sharif wins the header really well into the uh, uh, Aaron Martin, a, a perfectly executed overhead kick. I didn't see anything wrong with that at all, and I don't think anybody in here did either. And the Lions had the ball in the back of the net, but it is disallowed. Oh, how frustrating, Nick! Goal of the season just got disallowed. Oh, that's so unlucky. And uh, I think it's Greg Ollie. Uh, no, sorry, it was JJ O'Donnell who was down in the area holding his face. Uh, so the, I think the implication there is that as Aaron Martins made the overhead kick, he had a split second to make the decision. He went for it. He planted it into the bottom corner. The implication is he's picked up the uh, Gateshead left winger in the process uh, somewhere close to his eye. And uh, the linesman's flagged as a foul, I think. Absolutely gutting. 
Uh, if you get a chance, if Gateshead are producing highlights, which I assume they will be, watch that goal back because it was absolutely perfect. And, and if it is a high foot and if he has fouled the defender in the process, then fair enough. But it was it was a beautiful finish nonetheless. Meanwhile, and in the meantime, Gateshead have got a corner. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dominic Thier burst down the right-hand side and Nicholson gave away the corner. Gateshead taken from the right-hand side into the box there. Surely a foul on the Gateshead. Geisley defender there. Yeah, it's given eventually. Hamza Ben Sharif launched himself at that and took a boot to the chest uh, for his trouble. And the referee has finally given a free kick that the Lions can clear their lines there. I'd be interested to see a replay. I'm hoping that Tom Feeney's got that. He has. So we'll have another look at that in a bit. That's a, it's such a shame. I mean, it, certainly if not goal of the month, uh, goal of the season, then, then goal of the month. <laughs> that would have been... He's uh, to paint the full full picture. He's about twelve yards out, about level with the uh, penalty spot, maybe even slightly further. And he's uh, central in the area. The ball's coming towards him with his back to goal. He's uh, he's executed the overhead kick perfectly, planted it when it crossed the line. It was inches from the post at ground level, impossible for the keeper to get to. And people in uh, in our adjacent sort of press boxes here, shrugging their shoulders and. Uh, and uh, wondering whether that goal should have uh, maybe stood, or maybe if just well, it, on the basis of, of the skill that we saw, whether it would have been just nice to let it stand as it, a reward it, for what he'd done. It absolutely should have stood. There was no, there's no question about that to my mind. Still, positive noises from Geisley at the moment. Jamie Spence then plays another ball in towards Aaron Martin. Gateshead managed to get it clear. Aaron Solomon chases down the ball and wins a throw to Geisley in the Gateshead half. Again, about level with the edge of the penalty area. Brad Nicholson comes across. He's going to take that. Big old run up for Brad. And up come the big big guns, Hamza and Scott. At the near post there, Hamza tries to head it on. He might have got a push in the back there, but Brad Nicholson comes out again. Tries to get the cross in, and this time wins a corner. No? Wins another throw. It did look like a corner to me, Nick. It's then my glasses, who can say? It's it far away. It certainly did, but Brad's long throws are nearly as good as a corner, aren't they? And there it is into the edge of the six-yard box and nodded out by a Gateshead head, and that definitely is a corner, which Aram Solomon trots across to take. So Hamza and Scott can stay in the penalty area for a little longer. When these balls go behind, they go a long, long, long way behind the goal. So there's about a dozen ball boys around the pitch here, which is something quite rare to see. chance for the Lions they go short Sam Scrivens has it down the right hand side runs against the defender tries to get another cross to the far post to Aaron Martin and that one is in and that one will count and the Lions lead lovely cross from Sam Scrivens to the far post where Aaron Martin was lurking oh man how we have ever missed him it's number 15 of the season for the Geisley number nine Gateshead nil Geisley won well, if you want to win games, you need a cutting edge. And we've definitely missed Aaron Martin while he's been out and he's shown us there in the first 15, 18 minutes of this game how much he brings to this team. First with that disallowed goal and this time using his head. Short corner out on the left. Scrivens hooked it across to the far side of the six-yard box and a crashing header from Aaron Martin into the back of the goal at the near post past Brad James, and it's 1-0. And you have to say, Nick, on the basis of the last sort of five, ten minutes of play, deserved goal. Absolutely, yeah. Gates had had one good chance early on in the game, and since then, guys, they had been getting the pressure on, attacking throw-ins, and then eventually that corner that was well worked to uh, find, find Aaron Martin there at the back post. Well deserved for the effort so far, and we'll see if they can consolidate Gateshead will be looking to come straight back into this. Yes, well, as we know, taking the lead is one thing, holding on to it, consolidating it and uh, maybe extending it. You feel like one goal isn't going to do it for the Lions today. This is not a ground we have been very successful at in the past. Now, Kane Felix chasing onto a ball over the top, gets beyond the defender, gets into the penalty area. If he can cut it back, he's got yellow shirts in the box. Gateshead do well to defend it. Uh, and it comes out, and Jamie Spencer can just about keep that. Oh, it looked to me like he kept it in, but the linesman's given it as a throw in to Gateshead. But another chance, another opportunity, and another riddle for Gateshead 
to have to answer. Well, I haven't seen a game for about six weeks, and now I'm, I'm wondering what you've all been moaning about. <laughs> this looks all right to me. <laughs> Ball chipped over the top for Andre Jones. Aaron Martin sort of half goes in for it, but realising he would have conceded a foul, pulls out. Brad Nicholson, this is a bit clumsy on the edge of the on the centre circle. As the Lions now hook the ball forward for Sam Scrivens to chase, and he does. And as the Gateshead defender tries to clear, Scrivens puts it out for a Gateshead throw in their own half. Uh, the people are on the chat rooms, Nick. Yeah, it's, it's, just, sudden, it's just suddenly woken up. <laughs> Siran uh, has joined us. It so sound like, sounds like we're playing, and we are. And uh, yes, to answer your question, Jordan Preston is on the bench today. We're told he's missed a lot of time out with injury here at Gateshead, so uh, we'll wait and see what he uh, what he does if he gets an opportunity to come on. Martin playing the ball out to Solomon as Geisley just try and move the ball around in neat little triangles, but they've given the ball away here, and Gateshead can surge over the halfway line. Plowell played in, Marcus Dewhurst has to come out to the edge of the D to hook that away, and actually plays a rather neat little through ball for Aaron Martin. Aaron holds on to possession, and the Lions now can break. Kane Felix on the right-hand side, he's got George Cantrell outside him. Uh, Kane tries to take players on, uh, he's forced to turn back. Brad Nicholson now on the left-hand side plays the ball in again to the far post to Aaron Martin. Gets up, wins the header, but it loops into the arms of Brad James. Whew. George has joined us. He says, uh, get in there, guys, late. And he wants to know who scored. It was Aaron Martin uh, with the header here at uh, in front of us at this side of the ground at the near post uh, as, uh, as we look from the main stand here. And Andy Otley has joined us. And he's asked, is it peak glass half full to observe that we are a one man team but what a man and I, 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 I'm, I'm okay you know as long as we can keep that one man I don't, don't really mind so much but if, if he brings the best out in the other players because you know most of the rest of these players have been playing in the meantime haven't they and, and, uh, and, and if having a cutting edge there up front gives, uh, gives everyone else something to work around uh, then and, and brings out the best in the rest of the players then I can kind of cope with that Alex Nicholson with the ball for Gateshead down the right-hand side. He's forced to turn backwards by Geisley, who have regained their shape. Gateshead now moving the ball down the right-hand side. A neat little one-two. Nicholson gets in the box. If he can spit it back for Coyote, but it was behind Coyote. And uh, the Lions escape again there. A couple of times, balls across have been allowed to be played across the six-yard box. And so far, none of the Gateshead players have been able to take advantage. Here come Gateshead again, another ball over to the right-hand side to J.J. O'Donnell. J.J. O'Donnell closed down by Cantrell at the expense of a corner. And uh, Gateshead still pose a great danger to the guys' lead defence. Yeah, we need to knuckle down here because Gateshead are trying to push the tempo to get straight back into this game. They don't want to be a goal behind for too long and they don't want to leave that foothold in the game for the visitors. Neat little... As you say, there's been a couple of opportunities where they just needed someone to stick a foot out and finish it. Gateshead corner played in again over the head of the Gateshead attacker and cleared eventually by the Lions. Uh, they might try to break. Scrivens tries to play in Kane Felix, but the pass is heavy. And uh, Gateshead will easily take that. Liam Agnew down in the left, left back position. 23 minutes in this game. The Lions lead by a goal to nil. Now that it's calmed down a bit, can we talk about how you've gone with an energy level that I can't keep up with? <laughs> I don't think I can keep up with it. I'm just <laughs> excited to see a goal. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to take advantage of these goals. They don't come around that often. <laughs> Gateshead now down the right-hand side. Alex Nicholson plays that into the box. It falls to Jamie Spencer, who has to, at a bit of a stretch, hook that away. Kane Felix now on the right-hand side, but still in his own half. He's going to run at uh, the Gateshead left-back. And... Uh, Gateshead left back gets a challenge in and concedes a throw just inside the Gateshead half. Kane Felix looking really dangerous, isn't he, so far? And he's enjoying playing against O'Donnell and, uh, and against Barrow. Um, the two left-sided players, one of, uh, one of whom I think it's Barrow, is, uh, is down at the moment after that uh, collision with Kane. And uh, he was hoping for a free kick and we got the throw in instead. But yeah, Kane's working really hard. He obviously has that raw pace that makes him difficult to play against, but he's getting these opportunities to uh, slip the ball past players and, and beat them and have them running back towards their own goal, and that's always exciting to watch. 
Uh, Felix hooks the ball on towards Scrivens, who's beaten the air, but it comes back to Felix, who tries to get out to the right-hand side, but just overstretches himself, and the uh, Gateshead defenders can clear that again down the right-hand side over to JJ O'Donnell, who's been com combining with uh, Alex Nicholson quite well to cause Geisley some problems uh, in this first half. Another long ball Hamza should deal with and does uh, over the top there, Aram Solomon. I'm assuming he was trying to head that, but it just sort of bounced off him and into the uh, path of a Gateshead player. Now another long crossfield ball from Scott Barrow towards uh, JJ O'Donnell. But uh, eventually in the melee, uh, Geisley win a free kick. We'll take that. There's some scores. Some scores from elsewhere. Uh, Torquay are now 2 0 up at Halifax. It's Brackley 1, Chester 1, Kettering, who we play next week. A 1 0 up against Bradford Park Avenue. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that in the ex Geyser Managers derby. One, <laughs> of the, one of them's been given a, a stronger squad than the other to work with as they arrive mid season. But uh, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd much rather see Bradford winning. <laughs> Sorry, I'd much rather see Mark Bauer winning than Paul Cox. <laughs> Is that okay to say? I, I think I think on this particular channel, in in front of this audience, yes, <laughs> I think that's absolutely fine to say. Uh, uh, FC United trail by a goal to nil to Gainsborough. Uh, one Gavin Allett there scoring. Uh, Ashton lead now two one away at Buxton, and it's Grantham one Scarborough one uh, in the Premier there in the Glue League. Alfred and nil Spennymore one as well, and Warrington won, Hyde won. The Lions with the ball, with Andre Jones in the centre circle, played over the top for Aram Solomon to chase, uh, sorry, Brad Nicholson to chase, and Chasey does, brings it down beautifully, gets the cross in, but there's no one there in the uh, edge of the six-yard box. Aaron Martin just a little bit behind uh, the Gateshead defenders on that one, who'd, who'd read that quite well. Uh, and then Hamza Ben Sharif steps across to stop the Gateshead break. Yeah, Martin was at the back post, but there were three white-shirted defenders between him and Nicholson when Nicholson made the cross. So it was always going to be a bit difficult for Martin to get onto it. And uh, everyone else was still trying to catch up with play. Gateshead can certainly move the ball around well. On the left-hand side there, just moving the ball around in these little triangles, little one-twos that they're doing well with. There's plenty but more going on on the, uh, on the chat room. Siron's asked, uh, I think this might be the strongest 11 we can play and uh, ask what we think. I, I, it's there or thereabouts, isn't it? I've been really impressed with Reese McNally, the fullback, uh, and he's missing today. George Cantrell playing there and, and uh, Andre Jones playing alongside Jamie Spencer in midfield. So m maybe Reese at fullback and maybe George in midfield, but Andre Jones is very experienced as well and we've not seen that much of him. So it might well be that, that, that he's a, a first team player, uh, a first team starter as the year goes on. Ball now down the left-hand side, and George Cantrell has to deal with that to stop it falling to the feet of Dominic Tier on the left. Very quickly taken throw to Scott Barrow, who's now down near the corner, just trying to win another throw from Cantrell and Jones. So Felix. And uh, Dale Park Antiques, a fantastic player get in. I think we're all in agreement on that. And uh, George is already looking at how many goals Aaron might score in the season and uh, comparing him to James Hansen and there's all sorts going on there so uh, that's um, that's always a that's always a nice thought I, it, you know if Aaron if Aaron were to go I hope we get more than seven grand and a friendly for him <laughs> because I think he's a I think he's a really good player <laughs> Sam Scrivens there uh, trying to close down the Gateshead defence as they played the ball around there Cantrell and Felix linking up down the right-hand side, Scrivens back to Cantrell. Cantrell's ball over the top, uh, finds Aaron Martin just gradually offside, and he realised just in time the game continues. 28 minutes gone, the Lions leading by a goal to nil, and Aaron Martin header. Gateshead can clear their lines. Brad James with the ball long over the top. Uh, troublesome for George Cantrell to deal with, and Gateshead have another ball across the face of goal, but there was nobody there. He said fans must be furious with that one because uh, Dominic Tier worked very hard actually to get to the byline and pull the ball back across. Not a white shirt to be seen. Felix now wins the ball on the right-hand side, plays it forward to Scrivens. Scrivens tries to knock the ball ahead of Scott Barrow, but to no avail. 
Oh, I just don't think the shape is quite working for Gateshead yet. They're making these opportunities because they've got the extra body in midfield, which means they can use the full width of the pitch as well. But when the ball came into the six-yard area, uh, their, their one striker there, Josh Coyote, was almost back in the centre circle. He was so far behind play and so deep on. And that's not because he's not trying. He's, he's, he's constantly in motion, but they don't have that extra striker. And at the moment, the extra body uh, for Geisley is uh, what's making the, the spaces for Martin to, to have the chances that he's had. Ball played over on the right-hand side and uh, Marcus Dewhurst has to come right out to hook the ball away into the path of Aram Solomon who uh, frustrated the Geisley right back so much it just pushed him over. I particularly enjoyed how the uh, how Alex Nicholson uh, had the temerity to turn to the ref and go, what, what do I do? <laughs> Literally both hands into the shoulder blades, over you go. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, not much room for doubt in that for the, and we've been, we've been warned we'd had a friendly warning behind the scenes that this referee might not be much cop from uh, one of our hosts here in the, uh, in the press boxes today but uh, again not a difficult decision for the ref to make that time Aaron Martin wins, heads the ball on and Sam Scrivens bothers the Gateshead defenders so much uh, that they will concede a corner <laughs> actually <laughs> as, as they tried to clear it they looked like they were trying to clear it out for a throw it ricocheted off the corner flag and out for a corner Fantastic work there from Scram Scrivens. He has played well today and worked very hard. Uh, he's looked very lively, yeah, but uh, it, it, I really enjoyed that because that looked like that was going out for a throw-in and then it just rolled towards the corner flag and then bounced off, in, off, off to the right side for a corner. That's, that's, you don't get to see that very often. That's nice. Brad and Aram. Well, Brad hits it low into the edge of the six-yard box. Jamie Spencer was almost onto it. Uh, Gateshead work quite hard to get rid Perfectly worked corner. Just tried to cut them out there, didn't per it? Perfect, a low ball, uh, and knowing the, uh, uh, anticipating the run of Spencer late into the area, uh, at the near post, about ten yards out, and uh, Spencer nearly got that one. He managed to rifle that one in at the near post. Really nice set piece. Andy otley has gone way too soon on the uh, chat room here. I, I, I don't want to hear it. He's gone uh, way too soon. You're too soon, Andy. You're too soon. Have I, you seen Geisley before? I don't, I don't want to hear optimistic predictions when we're only <laughs> half an hour in. <laughs> so, ball played down the left-hand side. It's uh, cleared away by Gateshead. It must have been ricochet off Sam Scrivens because it's a Gateshead throw. <laughs> and uh, some other scores. Whitby nil, Nantwich 1. FC United 1, Gainsborough 1. Uh, Gloucester 1, Kurz and Ashton 2 and it looks like Telford have just taken a lead against Boston as well now the Lions have the ball, Aaron Martin okay, Felix looked like he was pulled down but uh, not making a big fuss about it it was really good work actually by Aaron Martin there because it looked like Felix was fouled and, and Martin carried on running deep into midfield to cover for the space and, and that's how come we've still got the ball now and we're coming forward again Lovely crossfield ball from Scott Garner there. Nearly played Brad Nicholson in, but Nicholson held the ball up. Here's Nicholson again going back. Uh, a ball into the box and uh, just ahead of everyone there. Uh, ahead of Aaron Martin and far, far too far ahead of Kane Felix who was loitering on the penalty spot waiting for the cross. So it falls safely into the arms of Brad James. Now, I've got to be careful because he's so far away that, that I can't really see him and I haven't seen recent games, but has, has Aaron Solomon had quite a severe haircut? Yeah, he had that a little while ago, I think. Is it, is it just really tightly braided or is he actually... It, from here, it looks like he's, he's cut it all off. I think, I think it's tightly braided. Okay. Tom's given me the international symbol for braiding. <laughs> I think they teach you that in uh, journalist school. We're, 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 it's, it, he is an awfully long way away over here. <laughs> yeah, he had that a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I like well, the, I like the big hair. I would say <laughs> if you can, if you if you've got hair where you can, as someone who's losing his quite rapidly, <laughs> if you can if you can do what he can do with your hair, then do it for as many years as you possibly can. That's my advice to Aaron Solomon as a professional football and hair coach. <laughs> Gates said with a throw deep inside the Geisley half. It's uh, Scott Barrow tries to get the cross in, but closed down by Kane Felix. Uh, Kane has possession of the ball, but he's facing his own goal. Back to George Cantrell, who hooks the ball away. 
And uh, under challenge from a Gateshead defender, Aaron Martin wins a throw. The Lions can clear their own lines. Calmly dealt with, I thought, there. Yeah, for the most part, we've been really solid at the back. We, we have had those chances, uh, but uh, Dewhurst yet to make a save. But um, otherwise, we've been pretty composed down there so far. And certainly Andre Jones seems to be providing a, a, a sort of a, a calming, steadying influence in midfield there. And that's probably beneficial to uh, Jamie Spencer as well because it gives him a little bit more licence to uh, get a bit further forward and, and mix it up a bit and know that Jones is probably going to stay a little bit deeper, just a little bit tighter to his centre-backs. Another long cross-field ball for Gateshead and nodded down almost into the path of the Gateshead number 10. And a rather hurried pass back by Brad Nicholson is hit back first time by Marcus Dewhurst. JJ O'Donnell now down the Gateshead right. Wins a throw. And Gateshead can continue to move forward. O'Donnell uh, and Nicholson trying to combine. O'Donnell being forced backwards by the guys in the defence. Uh, but they're joined again. And now it's out to Alex Nicholson. Alex Nicholson's shot. Uh, sorry, cross ricochets off Brad Nicholson. And out for another Gateshead corner. I haven't been keeping count, but Gateshead seem to be winning the corners. They've had a, a good number of them and they've been pretty well defended so far. But once again, every guy's the player inside their own area here. Ball in to the far post, nodded away by a yellow shirt. Didn't see who it was. Hooks straight back in uh, to the Geisley penalty area. Geisley still have some work to do and a shot comes in from the edge of the penalty area just wide of Marcus Dewhurst's left-hand post. And the Lions escape again. Not having just complimented their calm, uh, organised defending. That all immediately went out of the window. Well, it was a bit of a scramble, wasn't it? And that was the first time we've seen Dewhurst fling himself across. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to cover one there that he thought was going wide. He was, he was throwing himself over there to try and make the save. And uh, the ball reached just beyond both him and his left-hand post. And we can breathe a sigh of relief. And in response to it, the uh, Gateshead substitutes were sent out to warm up all three. Uh, of the uh, of the likely ones we're likely to see, and yes, that does include Jordan Preston, who's uh, been sent out to uh, get himself ready. And with ten, nine ten minutes of this uh, first half left, there's a possibility that uh, one or more of them may, may get called into action after the break. So they've got to get themselves ready. Ball played over the top and uh, cleared again away. Uh, by the guys in defence, Aaron Martin, right on the byline, on the touchline, sorry, so couldn't keep that in. 37 minutes played, the Lions lead by a goal to nil, Aaron Martin in the 18th minute. And Gateshead with possession of the ball. They are not out of this game at all. They've had a couple of half chances. And they've only just narrowly missed the goal with a shot from the edge of the penalty area. Plenty more going on in the chat room and some of it is at my expense. <laughs> So that's always good. We'll just wait and see if we can get this one clear yes. at the back. Yes. Uh, Josh Coyote has the ball, plays it into the centre. Gateshead moving from right to left. Scott Barrow has the ball. Caden Felix comes to meet him, uh, but Barrow charges down the left-hand side. The ball played to the edge of the six-yard box. It's going to fall to Nicky Devidich. Nicky Devidich back out to Barrow on the left-hand side. Guys, they have to keep their shape, have to keep their concentration here. Gateshead can move the ball around well, but as soon as I say that, it's a looped miss hit pass um, but it comes back Greg Ollie with the ball right across the goal and oh my goodness me and the Lions escape again nobody got on the end of that there was one player hurled himself at it but the yellow shirts again just watching that ball from Greg Ollie flash across Marcus Dewhurst's goal well I don't know whether it's just that they're not anticipating these balls coming in or whether it's something about the shape that means that they're, they're always a person short but it's becoming a recurring theme in this game that, that, that Gateshead just need to be... Someone needs to show a bit of, uh, of poaching instinct and get on the end of one of these. Yeah, it's strange that the same thing keeps happening. Scott Barrow now brings the ball over the halfway line. Plays it out to Dominic Tier, uh, who's up against George Cantrell. George Cantrell stays on his feet, but Tier is seen inside and a low pass into the penalty area goes out for a goal kick. Um, for a dangerous moment, again, maybe Tier and Coyote not on the same wavelength there. Again, dangerous moments. You can't allow Gateshead to keep moving the ball around that calmly. 
uh, around your own penalty area you're asking for trouble well we know that Coyote's here on loan I don't know how long he's been here on loan but there, there, maybe there's a bit of a communication breakdown here because he, he was sort of stood there swinging his arms around as though to ask well what, wh where was I supposed to be for that and the answer was you should have been running into the area because there was a ball played in for you there and you'd have been one on one with the keeper six yards out So another ball played over the top. Uh, Cantrell was beaten by the bounce, but the referee, the linesman on the far side is given an offside, so Geisley will have a free kick that Marcus Dewhurst can take and just clear a little bit of this pressure as we uh, approach the final five minutes of this half. Well, let's get caught up then. Keith Walker's joined us, and he says Halifax are two down. Oh, dear, what a pity. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, and uh, Andy, uh, Andy Otley has uh, helpfully... Helpfully observed that, uh, I, that he thinks Dave and Nick talking about hair braiding might just be the journalistic definition of out of one's depth. <laughs> Aaron Martin had the ball, did really well, turned and twisted away from two defenders, had Kane Felix just there waiting, um, and then passed it off for a Gates head throw. But Sam Scrivens works hard to win the ball back and wins a Geisley throw. Sorry, Jamie Spencer even. Now, there's another, another good opportunity, this, for Geisley. They've uh, been under the cosh for 10 minutes or so now. And Brad Nicholson's going to come over and take this long throw. All of the, uh, all of the guys, the attacking players, which from set pieces includes, of course, Garner and Ben Sharif. They're all in the area, hoping to get onto this around the six-yard box, maybe. It's taken short. Nicholson goes short to Felix. Felix goes back to Nicholson. Spencer... He's closed down quite quickly before he can get the ball into the box. And he's forced down the right-hand side. Could try and win a corner here. Tries to put the cross in. Scuffs the cross, but the referee has given a corner. No, no, no. He, so he made a good contact. It came straight off the defender who was right in front of him. And uh, a corner it is. You don't agree? The, the linesman was maybe 10 feet from it, Dave. Okay. Okay. It's a corner. Okay. Brad Nicholson then. And Aram Solomon in attendance. Nicholson will... Toss this up to the far post and Brad James comes out and claims that very well. Aaron Martin in close attendance just to try and stop a quick break, which he has succeeded in doing. But he's going to have to have a word with the ref now. Well, I don't, I don't know what else the referee can say to him. He can't point out what Aaron Martin just did. It, you know, he's, he's, he's either done something... He's, oh, no, there's some, something else going on here. He's a referee's wandering over towards the dugouts with Aaron Martin here. Bringing Aaron Martin over for a telling off? Or I, I don't know if he's bringing or him over for a telling off or has he, has he taken a bang? Is he, is he, it could be a blood wound or something like that that can we can't see from here. He's literally walking him off the pitch. Not quite sure why. Don't see Ashley anywhere. Oh, here he comes. Ashley's getting his gloves on. Right, OK. Well, OK, we'll, we'll so... Down to a bit oh, then. do you know what? It looks like on his shirt he's got a bit of blood. Okay. So he must have got a cut at some point somewhere. So the Lions down to 10 while Aaron Martin gets cleaned up. Work fast, Ashley. Work fast. <laughs> 42 minutes played. The Lions lead by a goal to nil. Brad James knocks the ball out to Scott Barrow up to Josh Coyote. And Coyote beats Jamie Spencer and feeds... Again, Scott Barrow and guys, Gateshead moving forward with danger there. And Hamza Ben Sharif's clearance ricochets back. Ah, the linesman's given it as an offside anyway. And that was good work no. by KOD, a bit deeper, but he just had no one ahead of him to play in. I, I missed that because the linesman was right behind one of these uh, uh, wind, yeah, yeah. windows. The, we've got these amazing, uh, to, just to add to the atmosphere, we've got these, these, <laughs> these amazing aluminium sort of supports uh, for, the, for the glass in here that, uh, well, they don't make it easier, do they, Dave? They, they don't. I was they waving don't. at the linesman who had his flag out and wondering why you were staring yeah, at me so blankly. I didn't see anything. <laughs> and uh, it's all getting a little bit scrappy. And uh, Aaron Martin is getting bandaged up. Terry Butcher style. As Gates said, try and move a cross field ball and actually do. And Alex Nicholson keeps that in well. Aaron Solomon in close attendance. But the referee has pulled the game back because the Gates said player is doubled over and uh, 
holding his face. This is actually, uh, yeah, it's uh, number eight, Liam Agnew, uh, who's gone over. Quick update uh, from other scores. Gainsborough lead FC United uh, by two goals to one. And Eastleigh have not only equalised, but taken the lead uh, in their game at home to Harrogate Town. And there's some fireworks going off. Mm. Nice. In the daytime. Got a good got a good cheer from the crowd, which of course no nobody listening to us will have heard. <laughs> but uh, we could just be making this up. Yeah, there's fireworks and there's people cheering and ooing and ahhing. To be fair, we could be making this whole game up. No one will believe us. We Guys, could... are you winning? What? <laughs> uh, Matthew eighty eight has joined us for the first time, I think. Certainly the first time uh, I've been on on the chat room. He says uh, some half time listening for you. He's suggesting uh, so far away by Dire Straits, uh, which is uh, that's good. Uh, we'll be putting some more appalling copyright free music on at, at, at half time to uh, torture you all with so we can have a little bit of a break and uh, sorry to any of you who caught that before the game um, but don't, uh, don't apologize uh, at least at least we're, 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 at least ITV or Carlton or whoever owned the rights to most of those uh, TV theme tunes they're not likely to be chasing us down nobody's listening <laughs> Games restarted. Uh, Gates said, "Have the ball uh, in their own half, which they've given away to Jamie Spencer." And uh, unfortunately, Aram Solomon uh, can't uh, can't hold on to three minutes additional time. Uh, we will have here, and a great tackle there by Andre Jones stops another Gates head attack. Kane Felix again back to goal. A one-two plays up to Sam Scrivens. Sam Scrivens does really well to control it. He's got a player to his left. He's got Aram Solomon to his left. Aram Solomon just a little bit far out to the uh, to the right-hand side, but still has possession. Knocks it back to Brad Nicholson. First time cross. It's very high and looping down almost onto the head of Kane Felix, but it goes away. George Cantrell uh, will recover it. I'll let it go out for a throw. Aaron Martin bandaged up, just getting his shirt on. I wonder if we can... Uh, we probably won't be able to bring him on before this, will we? Uh, the, referee, the referee's coming over for a look, actually, so I think he's, he's going to inspect and, and check that he's happy with how uh, Aaron's been patched up. Two really good moments from Andre Jones in the build-up uh, to that last chance in the box. First, that brilliant tackle, but then the first-time ball, uh, the ball was played back towards him, and he played it first time forwards to, uh, to Scrivens to play him in on the edge of the area. Uh, with, uh, with the opportunity to, uh, to try and make something happen there. Really, really good uh, quick passing from the guys in midfielder. Nicholson with the throw up to the edge of the six-yard box. If it can fall for a yellow shirt, but it just doesn't. Aaron Martin retains possession. Aaron Solomon tries to get beyond a defender. Uh, causes enough problems for Gateshead to concede a throw. Another opportunity for Brad Nicholson as he trots across. Aaron Martin, yes, he's back on the field. He's got his bandage. He's got some gloves on. So I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm on board with but uh, I'm not going to tell him. Brad Nicholson then with this throw. He's going to go into the edge of the six-yard box. Uh, Hamza goes up. Coyote is actually underneath it. Jamie Spencer tries to head it ball back in. Uh, Gateshead can bring this away now. Another heavy touch uh, from Dominic Tia. And it goes out for a throw. And uh, under a challenge, the uh, Gateshead fans... Slightly annoyed that they weren't given a free kick. Well, both both sets of coaches kicking, and players, to be fair, and fans, but coaches in particular kicking off after that challenge that had Paul Clayton leaping over the player, the Gateshead man, as he slid into the guys they dug out there. But the game goes underway with Gateshead on the attack. Yes, Gateshead bringing the ball away down the right-hand side. They've had a bit of joy down the flanks at the moment as they played that towards JJ O'Donnell. But uh, He's got two yellow shirts in front of him. Guys, they're closing down pretty well, but they can stop JJ, and they have, and he's run it out for a goal kick. Good defending there from the Lions. And that's and half time. That is indeed half time. The referee has blown the whistle, and at half time here at the Gateshead International Stadium, it's Gateshead nil, Geisley one. That's, uh, again, that, that head tennis uh, starts up again, and uh, between Brad Nicholson and Hamza Ben Sharif trying to shepherd that back to Marcus Dewhurst, but Marcus uh, slightly unwilling to come off his line. And uh, again, possession is conceded. And a foul is given, I think, to Geisley for a challenge by Liam Agnew. Oh, and I'm sorry, I can't see who that is. It's Jamie Spencer. Jamie Spencer. And goes down, clutching his shin. 
gets back. Rolls over onto his knees. Well, the one Take your time, Jamie. The one good thing you could say about <laughs> Jamie Spencer getting injured is that he'd serve fewer suspensions. <laughs> okay. No? No, no one wanting that? <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Uh, Andy Otley is saying no sound at all. Let's see. Let's just see. Okay, welcome back. Uh, if you haven't uh, already been with us, uh, as Geisley lead by a goal to nil in the early stages of the second half. Uh, Andy, if you can let us know whether you can hear me. Hopefully you will be able to now. Our gear is... Uh, as Nick says on the chat room there, our gear is a bit broken, a little bit old, a little bit decrepit, a little bit creaking at the seams like the rest of us. Ball played over the top as uh, Josh Coyote tries to bring that down. There's a shout for a handball, which the, the linesman has given. And it's a free kick to Geisley. For some reason, Aram Solomon seems unhappy about that, although I'm, I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, we have a free kick. You'll just have to take our word for it that it's a uh, it's lively atmosphere in the main stand here, certainly since half-time, with that foul of a clash between the new the two number eight, Sagnew and, and Spencer, and then that tussle has led to the guys' free kick here. Uh, Dewhurst a will take, and hits long up uh, towards Sam Scrivens, who's beaten in the air. And Hamza gets ahead on it, and it's out for a gateshead throw, just inside the Geisley half. And exactly as predicted, Gateshead have come out firing on all cylinders. They want to get back into this game as quickly as they possibly can. Ball ricochets into the path of Sam Scrivens, who tries to play Aaron Martin in, but just behind Aaron, uh, leaving Aaron Martin too much to do. He tries to close down uh, the Gateshead keeper, Brad James. And then latterly a central defender as well, but uh, to no avail. Gateshead clear their lines. It's hooked over again to Scott Garner, who again in turn... Knocks that out to the right-hand side. Gateshead managed to keep the ball in, though, well, for moments, uh, until trying to play uh, what looked like Dominic Tier through. It goes out for a throw to Geisley. And uh, if Gateshead do come out and try and um, push forward, that will create opportunities for Geisley on the break. So it will change the pattern of the play slightly. It was pretty even in the first half, to be honest. But um, if Gateshead push a higher line, and that's going to give opportunities for Scrivens, Felix and Solomon to try and run in behind. And obviously Aaron Martin will always be there or thereabouts as he is right now, tussling away with Dominic Tier. And wins a free kick as well from Tier. Bit of a soft one, I have to say. Thought that was a sort of a hip push. Uh, sorry We've if made we are, the most of it. Sorry if we are dropping in and out. We'll we'll try and keep an eye on that. We've uh, everything set up. All the lights are flashing the way they're supposed to, um, so it might be an internet signal problem. Um, but we'll we'll keep an eye on it. If there's anything we can do, we will. Aram Solomon, uh, ooh, no, <laughs> Brad Nicholson over to the far post where again, uh, yellow shirts await. Uh, comes out to Kane Felix. Oh, who actually clashes with Jamie Spencer on the edge of the penalty area, and I think Kane Felix has come off worst there. They both went to hit the ball first time. I think Jamie might have hit, and Kane, hit Kane. Kane's back on his feet but limping now. Oh, what a shame. Good, good opportunity as well. Spencer with another ball forward to Aaron Martin to run on to onto the edge of the penalty area. It runs into the arms of Brad James. Gateshead trying to play the ball along there. Back four now into the midfield. Uh, moving forward. Out to the right-hand side to J.J. O'Donnell. J.J. O'Donnell up against Brad Nicholson, gets the shot away. It's deflected away again, and again another shot from outside the box. Deflected away by Scott Garner, and all the way back to the Gateshead keeper. Well, it's definitely better from Gateshead. They're looking really dangerous, and guys need to just adjust their pattern to try and absorb some of this pressure without giving away any great in, uh, opportunities for the Gateshead forwards. Five minutes into this second half, the Lions leading by a goal to nil so far, but Gateshead certainly have come out all guns blazing in this second half, trying to get back into this game, as of course they must. I feel like this is an opportunity or a moment for Andre Jones to uh, show a bit of experience. He's been chosen in there uh, rather than Cantrell, who's playing at right back. 
and uh, presumably they've picked him to go in there because he's got a bit more experience and he'll be a calm ahead and he needs to help mop up some of these attacks. Felix moves forward down the right, plays the ball out to George Cantrell, edge of the penalty area here, Cantrell forced backwards to Kane. Kane Felix now moves down the bus, uh, moves down the touchline but is rushed out of play at a gates head throw and that attack kind of dies a death. Yeah, disappointing that looked like he could have done better over on the far side, Kane, but uh, a throw in to the home team it was. Game still happening all in the middle third of the pitch at the moment. And Brad Nicholson tries to bring a Gateshead clearance down and get past the Gateshead defender. He wins the throw. Telford have levelled up against, uh, sorry, Boston have levelled up against Telford. There's something going on there. Talk us through it, Nick. Well, Brad Nicholson was walking back towards where the linesman was stood to uh, collect a, a return ball to take the throw in. Meanwhile, about 30 or 40 yards higher up the pitch, Aram Solomon had got another ball and had taken a throw in from miles away from where he should be to try and get the game restarted. And uh, quite rightly, the home fans and the uh, officials all agreed that that was a bit out of order. And half the Geisley team had no idea that it was even happening. And, uh, so that was all uh, put, put a stop to and dragged back for Brad to take the throw in from the original place. Hamza goes up for a header with Josh Coyote, wins it. It goes out for a Gateshead throw. 52 minutes played now. As uh, Gateshead move the ball back to Brad James in their own goal. And, uh, Scrivens and Martin just hassling and harrying the Gateshead defenders. Just trying to keep them honest. As Gateshead try and build to go forward. And back going sideways. 1,004 in attendance here at the Gateshead International Stadium. Uh, no word as yet on how many Geisley fans have travelled. If we have that number, I'm sure we will get it to you. Oh, just like that. Just like that. Tom provides us 46. 46 hardy souls travelling north on this cold Saturday. At the moment, they're being rewarded. Hamza comes across to stop Coyote getting away down the right-hand side. And uh, Gates said can still move forward. Lines have to keep their shape, have to keep concentrating, trying to ride out this particular storm. JJ O'Donnell moves in from the right hand side. Uh, ball played out to the left hand side as goes Gateshead attack, and he moves into the box, gets to the touchline, and he was going down long before there was any contact with the Geisley defender. And you can tell because none of the other Gateshead players are even attempting to convince the referee that was a penalty. Uh, he, <laughs> he, uh, he, he advertised plenty of time in advance what he wanted there before uh, going to ground and uh, I think quite an easy decision to make really that that was not going to be a penalty. Those 46 guys the fans were, were segregated today um, not that we can see any of them but uh, we're all in the same stand and those 46 guys the fans are miles away down to our left uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at the goal that uh, guys they are attacking in this second half so well done to them for joining us. We can't see you or hear you. I heard I heard them as we were right uh, as we were arriving just before the game. I heard a few people doing the Geisley chant and, uh, while the players were warming up. But uh, seen no no sight nor sound of them since we arrived here in the press box. But we know that you're here, and uh, well done on a pretty murky day down in Yorkshire. It was it was grim weather driving out, and then we just hit a point on the A1 where the, uh, the sky brightened up and since then it's been a pretty nice afternoon and that has continued so far into the game. Nine minutes into the second half. The Lions are leading by a goal to nil still, but they are weathering a Gateshead attack uh, who have come out for this second half. Much, much improved. Another long ball over the top for Sam Scrivens to chase. It's nodded on back to the Gateshead goalkeeper. And uh, Gateshead will have a chance again to build from the back. Jamie Spencer going in on a Gateshead midfielder and uh, winning the ball. Uh, but then Aaron Martin does the same and does not win the ball. And it's a free kick to Gateshead. Keith inside Walker, their own home. Keith, sorry, Keith Walker on the chat room just uh, asking that, that question that always comes up in the situations we had a few moments ago. If, if the player's gone down 
asking for a penalty and the referee's not giving it, shouldn't it be a yellow card for diving? Um, and I think the, I think the question is, uh, it's not a non-contact sport, so players can go down without being fouled, I guess, is what the referees are saying, unless they're all just too cowardly to, to book players every time they make a decision like that. I guess what they're saying is, we're, we're accepting that there's a reason why you could be on the deck, or you, or you could just be choosing to be there uh, without having actually dived, um, but that doesn't also mean that you were fouled. Um, so I don't know quite how they find their way around it, but clearly referees always find that in-between option, don't they? And uh, so we go on without a caution or a penalty. And now uh, Aram Solomon is called over by the referee. He uh, won the ball rather neatly, knocked the ball over the top of a gate, said defender, and then uh, knocked it just a little bit too far ahead of himself. And as he was stretching for it, caught the gate, said man. Uh, the referee just has a little quick chat with him. There's no cards as yet. We've had no cards in this game, have we? No, it's been played in a good spirit, and, and it, the referees let, let mm. play go. Uh, there's been one or two tasty challenges, but nothing sort of malicious or intentful. Coyote gets in just ahead of Scott Garner. Uh, Garner stays with him, though. Coyote tries to put the ball back across, but Gates had, uh, Geisley can clear their lines, but it comes straight back in. Uh, Greg Ollie almost on the end of that. Jamie Spencer has to step across and clear the ball away, and does so at the expense of a throw. Scott Barrow with the ball in his hands, quickly taken towards Ollie again. Uh, Kane Felix in the mix to try and get the ball clear. Uh, eventually, Jamie Spencer hooks it towards Sam Scrivens on the halfway line. But Geisley can clear if they can get out. But Gateshead pushing the Lions back here. Now, JJ O'Donnell down the right-hand side. It takes a deflection. Good defending there from Nicholson and Solomon combined. Again, hoofed over the halfway line for uh, Sam Scrivens to chase fruitlessly uh, uh, but uh, Aaron Martin then wins the ball beautifully back Sam Scrivens almost turns his man another Gateshead defender steps across to block his path the long ball again is nodded down by Cantrell to Felix Felix now down the right hand side in a foot race which Kane Felix of course wins Kane Felix with a cross in towards a Geisley man and the header whew, from Scrivens he was slightly off balance when he hit it it went across the face of goal and wide of Bradley James's right-hand post. It's frantic stuff and end-to-end -end and the players all running at full steam. Kane Felix in particular busting a gut to uh, take the long way round Scott Barrow over the far side of the pitch. And he uh, did really well to get onto it and the ball into the area was good. As you say though, uh, Sam Scrivens, as he, as he made contact with it, he was sort of leaning diagonally, trying to get his head onto it and sort of head it back uh, into the goal as he was leaning across it in the opposite direction. That was really tricky to do. We're really lucky to have Aaron Martin now, who's really good with his head, uh, but uh, we shouldn't take for granted that uh, headers always go on target, and that one was a, a tricky one. So fair enough. Uh, good chance made, and fair enough that couldn't get it on target. A couple of other scores for you around the leagues. Kettering now 2-0 up against Bradford Park Avenue in Eastleigh, now 3-1 up against Harrogate. Gloucester have equalised. Gloucester 2, Curzon Ashton 2 now. And Boston lead uh, by two, by now three goals to one. Uh, literally just uh, scored their third there. It's all happening out here. You know, players down injured, players lacing their boots, the ball's at one end, the referee's at the other wanting a set piece, the fans are exercised in the ground, the atmosphere honestly and you will have to believe us on this has has been steadily rising since the break because uh, Gateshead are going all out to try and get back into this and guys are getting their chances in return Dewhurst with long ball up to the edge of the penalty area that Gateshead can clear uh, nodded it back in by Hamza Ben Sharif it was a rough challenge but a fair one says the referee and uh, Gateshead can ferry the ball back to Brad James in their own goal an hour played here the Lions still with that one goal lead starting to look just a little shaky as Gateshead have started this second half very well indeed and header back to Marcus Dewhurst who was just slightly wrong footed for a second but then came to collect it as JJ O'Donnell approached yeah heart and mouth moment that time I need to look up I, I, I know that Josh Coyote is here on, on, on loan I assume that means he's young uh, and he's getting a bit of a tough lesson from Hamza Ben Sharif so far this afternoon. The, the physical tussle, uh, Hamza is um, showing him showing him how to use your physicality and when. 
and it's uh, leaving the number nine, the Gateshead striker. A little bit frustrated at times because he doesn't know how to, how to use his body in those challenges just yet by the looks of it. Ball down the left-hand side for Sam Scrivens to chase, uh, snapping at the heels of the Gateshead defender eventually. Uh, gives away a free kick. Spennymore now 2-0 up away at Alfreds and Ramshaw with the second there. Nantwich 2-0 up at Whitby. He's 19 years old, Coyote, and uh, that makes sense, actually. It's a little bit like watching um, Rowan Liebard when he was with us. You know, he's, he's, he looks like he's got something, but he's, uh, and, he, and he, may well, he may well get the better of the two guys, the centre-backs, at some point in the game. Ball down the right-hand side, Greg Olley can put that ball in. It's fallen to a white shirt who hoofs it over the bar. Dominic Tier coming into the penalty area, getting on the end of Greg Olley's cross. And Tia, it just bobbled in front of him and over the bar. That is probably Gateshead's best chance of the game and certainly one that should have at least been on target there. I think that was the chance that the phrase blazed over was created for because he's running into the box at full speed and he should have buried it and he has fearsomely struck it six, ten feet over the bar from about 12 or 14 yards out, if that. But it has been raining this morning. So I wonder if the pitch is just a little bit damp on top. If I want to make excuses for him. Well, they, so they, that's what I'm saying. they were watering it at half-time. They, they have the, the uh, pop-up sprinklers here because yeah. it's a big, because it's a big time stadium. This, they have the pop-up sprinklers, which were also sprinkling the people doing the half-time penalty challenge, which was excellent fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lucky Stars. We don't have that at Nethermore. <laughs> I'm just watching Hamza once again there with Josh Coyote. And uh, as I say... Coyote may well... Andre Jones, burst, uh, sorry, Kane Felix bursting through the middle and just fails to control it and uh, Gateshead win the ball back just before he can cause any, any major problems. Sorry, Nick, we'll come back to you in a moment, but Gateshead are breaking down the right-hand side. Another opportunity here for Dominic Tier to put the ball into the box. It's rather overhit, but it falls for Greg Olley. Greg Olley plays it back into the midriff of Jamie Spencer and out for a Gateshead corner. Well, the, all I was going to say is I, the, there's a lot of time left in this game, but... but uh, Coyote's been really well marshalled by Ben Sharif in particular so far. I think from a set piece like this, though, that's where he's going to be really dangerous. Ollie, right footed into the penalty area. Up and just not quite won by a Gateshead head. It comes back out uh, and to Liam Agnew, who has to play the ball out. The Lions just trying to clear their lines now. Gateshead still in possession, trying to move forward trying to make the most of this momentum that they've got. Greg Olley springs past Aaron Martin, plays in JJ O'Donnell, and a good, great tackle by George Cantrell there. Uh, ricocheted back off O'Donnell's shins and out for a goal kick. Really well read there by George Cantrell. Yeah, and it is good defending this by guys who are under a lot of pressure since the break, and they're holding out well so far. Uh, it's a little bit more last ditch than we would like, if we're being honest, but at the moment... This, uh, if they can keep this intensity up at the back, then uh, it'll serve us pretty well. There's a little bit of chatting going on out there. Scott Garner holding his arms out, asking the players around him, how are we going to stop this from carrying on happening every couple of minutes? Ball hooked up into the air with Aaron Martin underneath it, and uh, Aaron Martin wins it. And the Lions still move forward. Kane Felix tries to play in Aaron Martin, but just under hits that. Brad Nicholson wins the ball back on the left-hand side for Aaron Solomon to chase forward, uh, but is fouled. Geisley will have a free kick. Uh, notable scoreline, uh, latest score, of course, Blythe 1, Farsley 0. Blythe 1 up. And Halifax 3-0 down to Torquay 0 at home. So a worthwhile trip for Torquay fans, at least. <laughs> surprising to see Blythe in front there against Farsley. Brad Nicholson with this free kick then, left footed towards the uh, far right hand side of the penalty area, ricochets around in there and comes away eventually Josh Coyote uh, will try and bring that clear it goes out for a throw to the Lions and a substitution for Gateshead, and wouldn't you just know it Jordan Preston is about to be introduced to the action in place of what looks like JJ O'Donnell Well I think this is a sensible decision by Gateshead, much as a uh I have a certain feeling of dread as an ex-Lion ex comes on to play against us. Uh, he's had a lot of time out, we were told, before the game um, as, uh, as Jordan. Uh, but 
He's got an opportunity to impress here. But the truth is, the attacking pattern hasn't quite been working for Gateshead. They've been making chances or not, and not getting on the end of them or being ready to be on the end of a chance that they don't then manage to create. So it's worth switching things around a little bit and Preston will be happy to play out there on the left and uh, push into the centre as well. We know he's got a goal in him uh, as well. So uh, that's, a, that's a good choice, I think, at this stage of the game. Straight away, Preston trying to close down Hamza Ben Sharif on the edge of the uh, Geisley penalty area played up. Aaron Martin plays in Sam Scrivens and Gateshead do really well. A fantastic challenge there to deny Sam Scrivens, who was almost one on one with the keeper. Really good opportunity there. Nice little move by Aaron Martin to play in Scrivens. Scrivens' first touch, maybe not the best, allowed the Gateshead defender to retrieve it. But an opportunity gone there. That was fantastic attacking play. It's exactly what you want to see from a strike partnership. And uh, for, for Martin that time, taking the role of provider, nearly had Scrivens in one-on-one. -on -one. Long throw into the six-yard box, and it's into the back of the net! It looks like Hamza Ben Sharif got on the end of Brad Nicholson's long throw in the six yard box, nodded it down. The Lions have doubled their advantage on 67 minutes. Gateshead nil, Geisley two. Well, the Lions have been under the cosh since half time, and we said they would get their opportunities from set pieces, and they've pushed out there. They've got the attacking throw taken long into the area by Brad Nicholson and buried by the head of Hamza Ben Sharif. That second goal could be crucial in this game in snuffing out the resistance from the home side. It's the extra bit of cushion that we've been needing as Gateshead have been showing more and more attacking intent in this second half. And just after making the change that they hoped would have get them back into the game, uh, the, the Lions have doubled their lead. Could that be enough? Long way to go yet, Nick. <laughs> just over 22 minutes plus stoppages remaining of this game. But the Lions have given themselves every chance here. Two goals to the good. Aaron Martin in the first half. Hamza Ben Sharif popping up in the second uh, with a wonderful header to make it 2 0. But here comes Gateshead again. There's Jordan Preston causing problems. Plays a ball low into the penalty area. Jamie Spencer can hook that clear. And it goes out for a Gateshead throw. Yeah, on the chat room, mixlaw.com slash guys the radio. Andy Otley uh, pointing out that we're all goals today, aren't we? <laughs> as a reference to the, uh, the Halifax Torquay game but more importantly Yahoo get in there says Plastic Man what a start to the second half says Dale Park Antiques come on the Lions 2-0 it is how long is it since we've had a 2-0 lead away from home it doesn't feel like that happens terribly often it's a very very welcome return to form this Gateshead with a free kick from the left hand side played in towards their central defender almost falls for Greg Ollie. it's played in back by Ollie to a Gateshead midfielder who then hooks the ball over the bar completely bring that quite promising looking attack to a shuddering halt Kettering are now three goals to the good against Bradford Park Avenue Milnes with the third just after the hour here, 69 minutes played, it's 2-0 to the Lions. Ball cleared up for Aaron Martin to play the ball onto. Sam Scrivens just muscled off, off the ball. And uh, Gateshead can clear again. Now Josh Coyote looked like he was away there for a moment there. Playing on the shoulder of uh, Scott Garner. Uh, didn't follow it up and it falls straight into the arms of Marcus Dewhurst uh, Blythe says Colin was the last time we were two, two goals up away oh of course sorry we've had a good season haven't we so this has happened <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gateshead now bringing the ball down the right hand side J Jordan Preston on the edge of the box takes a shot it deflects and Marcus Dewhurst produces a magnificent save Jordan Preston's shot from the edge of the penalty area deflected off a Geisley defender in looping over the head seemingly of Marcus Dewhurst who stretched out behind him to tap the ball over the bar. What a save! <laughs> Gateshead will have a corner. There's still concentrating to be done. But my goodness me, what a save by Marcus Dewhurst. Good grief. That looked like the killer deflection. It looked like the inevitable goal for Preston, didn't it? You know, the huge deflection looping over the top. And Dewhurst is running back towards his own goal, and he's just managed to tip it over the top for this corner. 
Greg Ollie with the corner in, it's nodded away initially, and uh, Geisley can bring the ball away. Sam Scrivens has got George Cantrell and Kane Felix in front of him. Kane Felix has got in behind the defender. He's one on one with the goalkeeper. Kane Felix makes it 3 0. Kane Felix adds a third for the Lions. Do you know last season, every time we got a corner, we always said we're going to concede a goal from here. It happened to Gateshead for once. A wonderful, a brilliant, brilliant breakaway attack uh, played in. Kane Felix just herring over the halfway line, gets in one on one with Brad James, slides it underneath him to triple Geisley's advantage. It's Gateshead nil, Geisley three. Wow. He's done ever so well there, Kane Felix, actually, because he, he was he was tearing away at full speed. And as the ball comes towards him, it's slightly behind him. And he's had to rotate his hips and drag the ball. He, he realized he had the space to run into. So he didn't need to, a refined touch. He didn't need to slow down and collect it. He sort of managed to scrape it ahead of himself uh, away from away from outside his right hip and then run onto it. And he's shot early. He didn't wait too long. And that was crucial for that finish as the as the goalkeepers coming out towards him Kane Felix needed to be decisive and take that early he did he tucked it away from about the edge of the area he didn't wait until he was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper a few feet apart he got on with it uh, while the opportunity was there and he's rewarded with a goal well I tell you what I don't think any of us saw this coming but we, it's, it's absolutely deserved as well because we rode that storm at the start of the second half and Gateshead were very much on top at the start of the second half for the first 15, 20 minutes. Absolutely on top. Unlucky not to get a goal back. And then just moments before Kane Felix's third, a magnificent wonder save from Marcus Dewhurst. Keeps it at 2-0 and allows Kane Felix to, uh, to score a third goal. Greg Olley now from the right-hand side plays the cross in. It's, it's intercepted by Scott Garner and into the arms of Marcus Dewhurst. And at 3-0 up, it's uh, nearly 25 to 5 in the afternoon. There's not a long time that, 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 that we need to consolidate. Don't, don't, don't. No, I'm, don't, I'm not Nick. saying it'll happen. Here comes Jordan Preston. Uh, Jordan Preston plays in Greg Ollie down the right hand side. Greg Ollie with a lovely cross to the far post and a goal for Gateshead. Nick Keith, you keep your big mouth shut because Dominic Tia has just got one back for Gateshead. Preston playing the ball out for Greg Ollie. Greg Ollie with a cross to the far post. Tier gets in on it, and it's 3-1 now. No, no, all I said was, there's not that long that we need to consolidate for. I would have said maybe four or five minutes, but we've, we've managed about 20 seconds. You're making it worse. <laughs> Stop talking. Substitution for Gateshead. And it looks like number 15, Connor Oliver, is coming on. I'm sorry, I didn't see who went off, Tom. I think, I think it might have been... I'm yeah. thinking Liam Agnew. Looks like Liam Agnew has come off. Uh, Connor Oliver is his replacement. Wow, well... Well, I obviously accept full responsibility for that goal. Um, what I said still stands. You know, there's 15 minutes, 16 minutes of this game left. The job now is for guys to, to start concentrating and make sure that they see this through. Yeah, probably the first uh, lapse of concentration. Jamie Spencer then playing in Sam Scrivens, who's offside. And Gates said we'll get a chance to clear their lines. Kings Lynn leading by a goal to nil at home to Altrincham. Uh, Whitby 2, Nantwich 3. And we thought Bradford had got one back, but it's a... Uh, Correction, must have had a goal disallowed. Still catering three, Bradford Park Avenue nil. Uh, the, uh, the chat room's done our job for us. So Martin uh, asked a few moments ago, how long since we were 3-0 up away from home? And Keith Walker replied to say, probably FC United of Manchester, which ended 3 all. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, here comes a substitution as Sam Scrivens is coming off. Whoa for Paul Clayton with a full 15 minutes left to go. Has he got 15 minutes in him? Well, let's hope so, eh? I, I mean, Sam Scrivens has not had a lot of game time and it's been a, it's been a fast-paced game. And if they've uh, needed to withdraw him with a little bit still on the clock, then fair enough. Clayton's not had a lot of first-team time himself this season. 
I, I can only assume the idea is to try and get the ball to stick up the other end of the pitch. So that's that will be what Clates's job will be well, between him and Aaron Martin, just to keep, make, keep the ball as far away from the Geisley goal as possible. Well, what we haven't really talked about in, in the second half is Geisley haven't had much of the ball. You know, for all that we've deserved to be ahead, at no point have we been passing it around in midfield. Uh, we've always been trying to get forward quickly or soak up an attack in our own defence. Short throw to Josh Coyote on the edge of the Geisley penalty area. Coyote forced out wide and won well by Andre Jones. Really well done there. But uh, Lions a little bit slow to clear their lines and uh, Greg Olley just gets beyond Brad Nicholson to get a cross in that Marcus Dew has just hurl himself on top of uh, to stop that from getting any worse for the Lions. This is what you were saying, concentration. It has to be absolute concentration from here on in from every Lions player. Ball over the top for Marcus Dewhurst. Aaron Martin now has it. Uh, plays it low into the uh, uh, Gateshead penalty area. Falls to Jamie Spencer. Jamie Spencer gets a shot. It's deflected away. And in the end, takes all the speed off it. He's nodded back into the arms of Brad Jones by a grateful Gateshead defender. Well, it was sort of blasted into Paul Clayton, who was between Spencer and the goal uh, when Spencer got the shot off. But it was a, it was a total misjudgment by Nicholson, the uh, Gateshead right back, that allowed Aaron Martin in to, to place that ball back into the danger zone 13 minutes remain the Lions leading by three goals to one here at the Gateshead International Stadium goals from Martin, Ben Sharif and Kane Felix one goal back from Dominic Tia and Gateshead even 3-0 <laughs> not out of this game no we, we had some uh, we had some comments Andy Otley said oh I said we'd only sneak this one 1-0. One Plastic Man said, we seem to be getting the season back on track again. And Ian Terry said, who cares about the rugby result? Guys, they're 3-0 up. But they, they all came in before that goal. And we're not feeling quite so confident now, are we, Dave? <laughs> I think you just have to see out the next... Well, you've got 12 minutes left. An almost impossibly long 12 minutes plus stoppages, which it's Geisley, so let's face it, there's going to be about 20 minutes stoppages. If the Lions can hang on for an away win. And it's been a while... Ben Sharif just catching the back of Josh Coyote there and there will be the first booking of the game here. Uh, ball played down the right-hand side for Coyote to chase. Ben Sharif was just behind him, caught his heels. Don't think there was any particular malice in it, but definitely caught him. And the referee will issue a yellow card to the Geisley number five. He did catch him, but Coyote went down a long time after the, uh, the challenge, which is a little bit odd. Um, and made it look maybe worse than it was, but fair enough. The, uh, Coyote's been losing out on those challenges all game against Ben Sharif and Garner. So uh, now one of those defenders is on a yellow card. That might even it up for him a bit. So a free kick for Devidic to take. Left-footed into the box, has to get a yellow head on it. It is, it's Aaron Martin, but it's over the Geisley bar. And the Lions are gonna have to see this out. They've got 11 minutes to see this out, plus stoppages. And Gateshead is sprinting over to get the ball over there to take this corner. Greg Olley with the corner into the six-yard box to the far post. It's touched out again by Andre Jones. And again, look look at the pace. Gateshead know that time sprinting. is of the essence here. Yeah. They know that they've got to get a second goal while the going is good. David it's again with this corner. It's quite low into the six-yard box. Hoofed away there. And if I can be critical, I think they've rushed to take that corner, really. And that's why the delivery wasn't so good. Well, the Lions with their packs to goal at the moment. Blythe have doubled their lead. Home to Farsley. They're now 2-0 up. Kidderminster have equalised at Bootham Crescent. It's York 1. Kidderminster 1 there. And the comeback's on at the Shea. As Halifax have got one back. It's Halifax 1, Torquay 3 there. And the Lions have conceded another free kick. Hamza Ben Sharif is uh, only on a final warning now. He probably is, and that's come out of the blue. The referee's telling him to calm himself down or he'll be in more trouble. Devidic is going to take the, this uh, similar to a corner with his left foot again. Devidic left footed to the far post where Coyote is, and it's 3 2. <sighs> Devidic with a left footed free kick to the far post. Josh Coyote was there, unmarked at the far post, and only one result. 
Gates said two, Geisley three. Well, I, I said I said he may have something, and I said it would be from a set piece. I didn't think that Coyote had the beating of the, the Geisley defenders in open play, but he's clearly got a physical presence, and he's done well there. He's peeled away, got the clean header, put it in the back of the net, and we have a game on now. And we the have a real game on. The worrying thing for me now is that it looks like yellow heads have gone down and Gates heads tails are up. It certainly feels like that at the moment. Well played on for Kane Felix. Kane Felix just too far ahead of him. Gateshead defender comes across and hooks that ball well away onto the running track. There are nine minutes plus stoppages remaining. The Lions lead by three goals to two. They were 3-0 up. Never do things the easy way, huh? Another throw for the Lions. Edging forward on the right-hand side. I think that is the frustrating thing. The game was won. The, the game absolutely should was have been won. won. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's uh, it's been a, a couple of lapses in concentration. I, I guess they've adjusted their approach since Preston came on. They've they've had two strikers up front. Preston's been further forward most of the time. Long throw from Brad Nicholson into the six-yard box. Falls almost to the feet of a Lions man. Falls to the edge of the box to Jamie Spencer. It's deflected away and Gateshead can break now. And the roar of the International Stadium is behind them. Jordan Preston now down the left-hand side. He's got uh, Kane Phoenix with him. Sorry, Andre Jones. And another ball into the box. And over the bar from a Geisley defender. And that was all a little bit frantic. Well, well, now I do wish you could hear what was happening in the ground because there is a big atmosphere under the roof here outside our commentary box. Ball goes into the uh, edge of the six-yard box again. It just ricochets around. Gateshead uh, can't get the second ball in. Gateshead, uh, guys, they just need to clear their lines. Ball over the top. Uh, Kane Phoenix is lurking, but uh, nowhere near it, really. And a great tackle there, lovely tackle. Uh, on the edge of the box, the Geisley defender goes down and hooks the ball away. And Clates is chasing, and he's a good 20 yards behind everything. Now, here come Gateshead again. Oh, that's a lovely ball through, but it's not paid, not taken advantage of. The Lions really knew, need to get control of this game, wrench it back, seven minutes remain. Plus stoppage, Jordan Preston has the ball down the right-hand side. Nice little one-two here with Greg Ollie. Jordan Preston has broken down the right-hand side and it's another swishing ball across the six-yard box that nobody gets on the end of. Goes out for a goal kick and the Lions can breathe for a moment. Have to slow this game down, have to take some of the pace out of this Gateshead team, have to kill this momentum that the home side have built up over the last 10 minutes or so. Well, there's a couple of problems here, one of which is, um, and as much as I'm a, a fan of his, we're like playing with ten and a half men since since Clates came on. I'm, I'm sorry to say, uh, and when you look at our bench, although our first eleven was more or less back to full strength, there's nothing there. Dylan Barker's isn't going to come on and steady the game, or Nathan Newell, or or even Kennedy Diggy. There's no experienced players there who you could bring on and ask them to do a job for the last five or ten minutes of this game. So the guys who are out there are going to have to get it done between them. Andre Jones uh, fed Aaron Solomon, who tried to thread Aaron Martin in, but the offside flag went up. Yeah, it's looking a little thin on the ground at this point. Well, we've only named four substitutes mm. again, which is, is a bit of a sign, and, and, and one of those is not yet a first-team player, uh, and two others have had some first-team football. Barker's more than Dickey, but ne neither of them, you could say, is a nailed-on starter and, and, and not you know and not uh, players with the sort of history to say I can come on and, and mop up some of these loose balls in front of the area for the last 10 minutes or I'm going to come on and run in behind them and give you something to hoof a long ball out to. Chance for Gateshead, great save by Marcus Dewhurst, hit first time from the edge of the D by Greg Olley, he's their top scorer, that's why, but Marcus Dewhurst is a fine goalkeeper and parries that wide for another Gateshead corner. Five minutes left, it's Gateshead two, Geisley three. Another chance here for Greg Olley to put the ball in the box. Marcus Dewhurst punches it away, just to the edge of the D. Nobody marking him on the edge of the D. That's a ricochet away by Hamza Ben-Sharif. Geisley have to retake their shape, have to try and 
stop this from getting any worse. And it, oh, all that's happened is that Brad Nicholson's given away a free kick on the right-hand side. It's a very promising position for somebody to put the ball in. It's very similar to how they got their second goal. Nicky Devedic will stand over this. Again, Josh Coyote is at the far post. Dangerous moments for the Lions. Very, very dangerous as we approach four minutes remaining. Devedic, left-footed, up to the far post. Marcus Dewhurst comes out, punches it. It's not wholly convincing. Jamie Spencer can hook the ball away, but only to a white shirt as Gateshead will come back again. With the crowd behind them, with the momentum behind them, the Lions need to see this out. Can they? Hamza Ben Sharif steps up to try and clear the lines again, but again just falls to a white shirt. It's just a wall of yellow shirts at the moment. Ball out to the far side to Dominic Tier to the right hand side. That goes over. It should go out for a goal kick. It does go out for a goal kick. And the Lions escape again. It is going to be a very, very nervy last few minutes here at the International Stadium. Yeah, there's a lot of gesticulating and arm waving going on there, even in open play. Uh, Geisley players getting pulled out of position and, and Garner and Ben Sharif in particular trying to tell them when to get back into place. That time it was Spencer and Brad Nicholson was in between Garner and Ben Sharif and, and Ben Sharif was like, get out of the way, get back out into position. Ball over the top uh, that the Lions win. Jamie Spencer ball, wins the ball in midfield, but it can't control it at the moment. Kane Felix now, the ball falls to him down the right-hand side. He can make his way into the corner, uh, which uh, he will. George Cantrell down there with three white shirts around him. Uh, <laughs> four even. And what was but that one? Gates said have won a throw somehow. Five but seconds. Their clearance is only as far as Jamie Spencer. Jamie Spencer plays the ball into the box. Yeah. Jamie Spencer. Oh, Jamie Spencer's keeping going. He's got a chance on here. And a good shot and a good save by the Gateshead keeper down at his near post. And Jamie Spencer just would not be rushed off the ball there. Kept going. Got a left foot shot away. And a fine save by Brad James down at his near post. There'll be a substitution here for Gateshead as Paul Blackett will come on for goal scorer Dominic Tia. It was Jamie Spencer and Paul Clayton together on the outside edge of the Gateshead area on the right for Geisley and they were scrapping away to hold that ball there and get a shot away and it really forced a decent save out of James the keeper. It's a good ball into the box, it's punched away by Brad James. Uh, Andre Jones comes to try and retrieve it but the referee's already blown up for offside, I'm not certain who was offside there because the Lions are already sprinting back to defend the gates head attack. They have to repel another one. We have just over a minute and a half of normal time remaining. Another long ball under Marcus Dewhurst who plucks that out of the air. And no rush, Marcus. Absolutely no rush to uh, to get this away. We've got a minute and a half of normal time remaining according to the bright red scoreboard down on the track in front of us here. Clayton wins the header on the edge of the gates head box. It's still bouncing up. It's still not cleared. Martin uh, again wins the header, it ricochets into the path of a Geisley man, but the referee has awarded a free kick to Gateshead. Bit scrappy that. Hopefully run down a few more seconds. The final minute of normal time. The Lions leading by just the one goal. Here comes Josh Coyote down the middle though for Gateshead. Now again played away by Brad Aaron Martin. Oh, Alex Nicholson down the right-hand side for Gateshead, plays the ball into the edge of the penalty area. Again, surrounded by yellow shirts, Jamie Spencer tries to clear the ball, but only to the feet of Alex Nicholson. Alex Nicholson and Greg Olley try and combine down the right-hand side. They've come back inside to Devidits. And Connor Oliver plays the ball across. Gateshead just looking for an opening now. And Josh Coyote being forced backwards by George Cantrell. And not far enough, Gateshead can still have possession. Jordan Preston there, closed down quickly. Calayton hooks the ball back towards Brad James to try and ease down a few more seconds. There will be four minutes additional time. Four minutes additional time. Ball played down the right-hand side for Jordan Preston. He's under the attentions of Aram Solomon. Oh, <laughs> Solomon just loses his footing. Gateshead can bring the ball away again. Greg Olley now uh, on the touchline, plays it in to a Gateshead man. And they're looking for the out ball, Devidic to Jordan Preston, who's on the penalty, Odger penalty area. Uh, Devidic is still there, and <laughs> Hamza Ben Sharif had to be very aware of where he was and where his feet were, lest he give away, but he gave away the corner. 
Greg Ollie then with the cross to the far post. Josh Coyote almost gets up there and it's going to fall to Brad Nicholson. George Cantrell who hooks that away. It's very frantic stuff here as Gates said, try desperately to get that equalising goal. And the Lions desperately trying to hold on for what would be a first away win for I don't know how long. Greg Ollie down the right hand side. Back to Devidic, uh, sorry, Alex Nicholson. Alex Nicholson up in the air. Bra uh, Marcus Dewhurst punches it clear. Kane Felix has it on the right-hand side, but still. Oh, it's a Gateshead throw. On level with the penalty area. Quickly taken. Gateshead not letting up, not stopping for a moment. They have the momentum. They have the opportunity. They still go forward. They claim for a free kick, but Jamie Spencer scuffs the ball away. Jamie Spencer keeps going. He's going. He's got Paul Clayton in front of him. Clayton's wandered offside. Jamie Spencer goes over, and it is a free kick to Geisley on the centre circle, on the on almost the kickoff point of the centre circle. And Devidich has got himself a yellow card in there. Quite rightly, it was the second time that Jamie Spencer had been fouled as he brought the ball away. And when the referee waved to give advantage, the first time I thought. Referee, you are not giving us an advantage there. He's got Clayton in front of him and five Gateshead defenders were going absolutely nowhere. And uh, I was so glad to see Spencer fouled again. Devidic lost his rag with the referee, immediately shown a yellow card. And Geisley will restart from the centre circle. And head, as you might expect, for the corner. Well, Clayton goes up, wins the header, concedes a Gateshead throw. That does us no good at all. No good at all. Gateshead have the throw. I've no idea how many minutes are left. Anybody? May Too many. May maybe, maybe another 60, 90 seconds. Geisley just trying to, just trying to stick, keep the ball stick up there end of the pitch. Ball comes back to Marcus Dewhurst, who collects it in his arms and swooshes everyone forward. No sign of the referee uh, being kind here. <laughs> <laughs> Hamza Ben Sharif goes up with Josh Coyote in the centre circle, goes out to Kane Felix, who twists and turns ahead of. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking there. Ball boy returns the ball to Gateshead very quickly, almost like they've deliberately done that. <laughs> and Josh Coyote is closed down quickly by George Cantrell. On the right hand side, Cantrell sprints back into position. The referee checks his watch. We're waiting for the final whistle. Please, referee, come on. Another long ball up for Josh, Josh Co Coyote into the middle. Oh, into the penalty area, and Marcus Dewhurst comes and collects it. The referee says no penalty at all. Oh, my goodness. And no. Marcus can take his time. The referee's already checked his watch once. Surely, ref. Marcus's clearance is not great, but it goes out for another Gateshead throw. <laughs> it's gone quiet in the ground. I'm wondering if the fans think their final chance has gone, but the referee's letting this go a little longer yet. And all Geisley fans can do is wait and hope that they can see this out. Another chance for Gateshead. Oh, here's Alex Wilkinson in loads of space. It's taken a shot, it's deflected, it's wide, it'll be a corner. And it looks like they will get a chance to take it. We think we're nearly six minutes into added time here. And Gateshead are going to have one more chance. Corner on the near side, fireworks Greg going Ollie. off outside the ground. Greg Ollie, right footed. Gateshead keepers come up. Brad James, Marcus Dewhurst punches that away. Ah! And the referee has blown for full time, and the Lions have won. They've held out. It finishes here at the Gateshead International Stadium. Gateshead two, Geisley three.